So hello and welcome wherever you're listening into today's call. My name is Hugh and I'll be your host. Um, and um, I have to say you're in for what I would believe is an absolute treat. We're going to share with you today a story that I came across back around about 15, 16 months ago. Um, a company called Net Leaders and a product um, known as Dascoin within the cryptocurrency and blockchain revolution. I would describe myself before I start as what I call a reluctant participant in this sector and particularly on this route to market within it as well, simply because my background has been um, almost 30 years professional sales and marketing. I've been the corporate sales manager with one of Ireland's biggest fresh food producers during the 90s. I uh, stumbled into telecoms in 1998 purely by chance, although some people, including myself, subscribe to the fact that there may not be no such thing as coincidences. And for the last 20 years, um, I've made a very successful living from the telecom industry and um, building up something called residual income, which means you sell a service once and you continue to be paid for it forever and a day as long as you look after and retain your customer base. And that has certainly been the case for me. And that has given me the freedom to start my own businesses. I'm now involved in pubs and restaurants with brothers of mine have been involved in land and property and numerous different types of investments. And um, during probably the worst of the recessions over since that kicked off the global recession as we now are still pretty much living through since 2008, I became all too aware of how, how difficult it is for people to retain uh, in income and make provision for savings and making provisions for retirement. And I've also come to be extremely skeptical when it comes to things like um, pensions and various other so-called financial investments as well. And uh, what we're going to share with you today is not, I don't describe it as an investment. I'm not a financial advisor, so I'm not offering investment advice. But what I will say is that in the, in, the, in the current decade, during the teens, as we now call it, um, I have started to make provision for my retirement as someone in my mid-40s. And uh, the route that I chose to go before now has been within the precious metal arena, simply because I see gold and silver as something that has the potential to create a long-term store of value, something that can look after us, unlike um, the saying when I used to grow up was, um, it's as safe as houses. Well, certainly property investment hasn't been anything safe or anything near that um, in the last number of years. And I've been all too acutely aware of uh, as well of how many people around me, friends, business associates, business owners, self-employed people who have found their, their portfolio completely wiped out. So what we're going to share with you today is a new revolution that's happening within the cryptocurrency space. And 15 months ago, when I first became aware of this company, I would genuinely have dim dismissed it out of hand simply because understanding how the banking system works, I thought everything connected to cryptocurrency in my ignorance because I'd done absolutely no research was quite frankly a load of hogwash and another way of someone taking the money off the people's table in the last 12 months my um, opinion on it has changed significantly because i became aware of the technology behind cryptocurrency which none of the mainstream media is sharing with us and that um that revolution is what's known as blockchain. So this today you're in for a real treat because someone who has become a close advocate and friend of mine over the last uh, few months as we've been building and developing this business around the world is Stephen Moore. Stephen's background has been, he has been running his own businesses now for going on nearly 20 years. He's a native of uh, just outside Glasgow, Stirling in Scotland. And he has made his career and built his businesses spending the last 13 years living out in Australia. Uh, I first met Stephen about four, three, four months ago, shared this concept with him through another mutual friend of ours, and he completely got it. It blew him away. And he's now building a team that's gone completely international. Last night here in London, thanks to Stephen's efforts, we had people from all over Southeast Asia. We had people from India, from Bangladesh. We had people from Australia. We had people from the Philippines. We had people from all across Northern Europe, from Germany, across the UK. Such a widespread of people. And it's the blockchain revolution and what this company is doing in the digital currency sector that's making a difference. So I'm not going to speak anymore now. I'm going to hand you over to Stephen. Stephen will take you through the presentation. And at the end of this event, um, we'll open up the mics if anyone has any questions. So without further ado, uh, 
I'd like to welcome onto the call Stephen Moore. Stephen, please take over. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Hugh. Um, and look, what's really exciting is, is working with people of the caliber of Hugh. Um, having worked with them now, it's actually just over two months. Um, I found that the, the actual support in this organization is 100% second to none. Um, they are pillars, they are rocks on which we can, we can all base uh, you know, successful plans going forward. And uh, yes, certainly the last, last three days has been a very, very exciting. And I think at the basis of it all is this core of information, which ultimately I believe is so compelling that people cannot fail to realize and recognize that there is something incredibly special that we have our hands on here. So I'm gonna discuss very quickly uh, the financial revolution globally that's happening due to blockchain and digital currency. I'm gonna to touch on those subjects and hopefully uh, the information that I give encourages you to go and do your own research and start to, to get educated on what's happening here. Um, the second thing that we're gonna cover is what we, what we contend is the new global system that is going to help people exchange value around the world that's gonna transform um, global financial transactions. And that company is called Digital Asset System. So as we're aware, we are, we are living in incredibly fast changing times. We've had the information technology revolution and there are some companies within that that have massively changed aspects of our life. We have Google, which has changed the information. It's changed the nature of eating dinner with the family. No longer do you have family discussions. You have, uh, um, you just simply Google information and get it instantly and up to date. So Google has totally changed the nature of information. We have Facebook, which has changed the nature of friendship and incidentally publishing, uh, being the largest publisher in the world without actually writing any copy. Um, the, the entire nature of friendship has, has changed. In fact, yesterday I made officially four new friends uh, on the train uh, because we made Facebook friends and that, uh, that will lead to some interesting discussions today, I'm sure. Um, following on from that, we can see that Apple has completely changed communication. And um, Once upon a time I was involved in a company that had these this, this video phone technology that looked like something out of Star Trek that you plugged into your, your socket and your home phone. And within several months, maybe less than a year, Apple brought out the iPhone and that just totally revolutionized communication. Um, you know, global video chatting just became the norm from Apple. So look, but there is a far more significant change coming. Uh, and this is, this is the financial revolution and it's starting um, with the concept of blockchain. And we just go to the, World Economic Forum there in Davos, where we can see quotes from Richard Branson uh, and Bill Gates. Richard Branson says, the use of blockchain could create a real economic revolution. And we have Bill Gates. Uh, in the future, financial transactions will eventually be digital, universal, and almost free. Now, the way that we pay uh, and the way that we've been dealing with uh, currency over the, the last few decades has changed massively. In my first ever job, I actually received a pay packet and an envelope that had cash in it, um, but very quickly that was replaced with check. And then very, you know, not long after that, it was superseded by digital transfer into my bank account. Um, and today, the, the transition from cash to digital has gone so far that less than 2% of today's transactions are using anything that remotely resembles physical cash. We have the explosion of credit and debit cards, we have smartphones, we have Apple watches, etc. So quite simply, digital currency and fiat currency are already coexisting. Um, and what we're contending is here, we have a further move into the digital space. Uh, and, the, and Bitcoin is the start of this new um, revolution in digital currency. Um, and why I say it's a revolution is simply because it was, it was designed and, and as a reaction to the failures of the, the global banking system in the wake of the 2008-2009 financial crisis. Uh, and the, the issues that fiat currency have, this was created as an independent um, ability to exchange value that had nothing to do with banks and governments. And through the blockchain technology, which is completely unhackable, not the FBI, the CIA, or the Russians have been able to hack any blockchain um, store of information. And bearing in mind that 
that started back in 2009. So that's quite an incredible level of encryption that blockchain has enabled. And what it means is that there is peer-to-peer -peer transactions that can occur globally that cannot be hacked, cannot be stopped, and there is no need for a third party validating institutions such as a bank or a building society or PayPal or Western Union. Um, so blockchain also allows these transactions to happen almost instantly with tiny fees and it has completely changed the nature of money. Now, Bitcoin was the start of this cryptocurrency revolution and what we have is we have a number of currencies that have followed the lead of, of the pioneer Bitcoin. Um, now we have over 1,550 cryptocurrencies and the market is growing rapidly. We can see here in April the 1st, 2017, there was 25.8 billion invested, total dollars invested in the cryptocurrency space. By January 2018, that was over half a trillion US dollars. Now, this is the slide that made me sit up and take notice because up until last year, I'd heard about Bitcoin and I'd basically put it in the basket of this is what, no offense intended, but sort of computer geeks and gurus and, and programmers, this is stuff for them. It's never going to be relevant to my life. It's never going to do anything significant. And we'll go into the reasons why I thought that. But when the amount of money started pouring into the space and into the asset class, I decided I have an option here. I can consciously bury my head in the sand, even though the evidence is there that there's something happening that is of global significance, or I can educate myself on what's happening. And in June, July last year, I started to read a little bit about it. I started to watch um, some videos on the internet um, and started trying to get, my, get a handle on it. And it took me a while to get a basic idea. Um, but that slide demonstrates the reason why I took notice. Now, this slide here shows the growth in Bitcoin itself. Um, and here we can see that $100 worth of Bitcoin in August 2010 would have been worth over $19 million in January 2018. Now, there is no asset class in history that has this level of explosive growth. It's a world first. Um, people are scrabbling to try and understand it. But the the principle on this slide is that if you're able to identify something that is going to grow um, in this space and, and you can make an informed decision um, and be an early adopter, you can do tremendously well. And there's numerous stories online of people who adopted Bitcoin early and have totally transformed their financial finances and have become multi-gazillionaires through Bitcoin. So moving forward. We can see back to Davos and Bill Gates and Richard Branson. Um, we contend Bitcoin may not dominate the future. And Bill Gates has said, we need things that draw on the revolution of Bitcoin, but Bitcoin alone is not good enough. And Richard Branson states, Bitcoin may not be the perfect currency of the future, but it is the pioneer of a global currency. There will be other currencies like it that may be even better. And this global currency phrase is something that we're going to come back to very shortly. Uh, and look, we'd just like to cover a, a business principle called the iteration of innovation. And this basically means that for every pioneering brand, there is a second more successful innovator that comes along, takes the best aspects of, of the pioneer, their direction, their technology, and builds on it and makes it mainstream. Um, now, Seeing these trends early can be life-changing, as the previous slide was showing with Bitcoin. So here, if we look at Yahoo, uh, and remember, remember Yahoo, that's totally given way to Google. Uh, now we Google information. Nobody remembers Yahoo. MySpace was completely superseded by Facebook, and Facebook took this mainstream to such an extent that there is no other social media platform that comes close to the 2.5 billion users around the world that are currently registered and using Facebook. And Nokia... Um, again, these wonderful little phones that, that were incredibly popular and dominating the market gave way to Apple. Um, so the, innova the innovator, if we can identify who the innovator is in a market that's going to take on the uh, mantle and, and, and of the pioneer and take that direction global, um, then we can, we can see something very special. And what we are contending here is that Bitcoin is the pioneer of digital currency. And it's a great currency. It's done wonderful things. Um, however, 
going forward, we are looking to see who the innovator is going to be. And we would contend that that innovator is digital asset system. Quite simply, the world's most advanced and secure solution for exchanging value in the world. Now, Michael Matthias, this is the visionary, the, the CEO, one of the four co-founders who came together in 2014. And he states that there's a better way to store and exchange value, a way that will unlock new levels of prosperity for millions of people throughout the world. And just an aside, um, these guys got together in 2014. They created a vision. And what has impressed me more than anything else is from that vision, they have attracted the team and they have achieved their goals. Uh, and this is a little timeline here, which shows some, some key events. We'll just have a look at three on here. In January 2017 was the first draft of the Dascoin white paper. Now, the white paper is effectively the company prospectus, the sort of vision and mission statement of what this uh, organization, what its aims are, its philosophies, uh, and how it's going to go about its business. Um, this white paper document, just Google Dascoin white paper, download it and read it. It's a phenomenal document and is widely regarded as one of the, the most incredible white papers ever drafted in the cryptocurrency space. Then in March, shortly after, we had the launch of the Dascoin blockchain in Zurich. Um, now, this was, again, a very, very significant time because although there are 1,550 other cryptocurrencies, only a handful have pulled together the resources required, which is considerable, to create uh, their own blockchain. So the launch of our own blockchain set us apart from the crowd. And we're going to talk a little bit about our blockchain because it's not any old blockchain. And we have a very, very special blockchain. Um, then moving forward from there, in September the 30th, we had the launch of the DAS exchange in Tokyo. So when the, the blockchain was launched, we started minting coins and the process began. In September, in Tokyo, the first coins were exchanged between members and participants in our platform uh, and, and they exchange value through Dascoin for the first time. Uh, and since then, there have been tens of thousands of transactions internally um, on the DAS exchange. So these are momentous occasions in preparation for, for our future. And launching into our future, we see here some of the, the photographs from the launch of the blockchain. And if we can look down in the center at the bottom, there's a, a table with some guests around it. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about who those guests are. On the, the far left, there is a gentleman who is actually the owner of St. Luke's of London, one of London's most uh, prestigious PR and marketing firms. In fact, here's a slide here that shows that they're actually the company that's responsible for taking Heineken from a local uh, brewery to a global brand. They also do all the work for Paul Roger. They took uh, IKEA again, the last 30 years, they have, they have done all of the PR and marketing work for IKEA. You'll see on the top right there, there's an incredible company called Dascoin, which we're going to talk about shortly. Um, but so trusted of this, this PR company that the, the London Olympics was entrusted to them by the British government in 2012. So this man and his marketing arm, that's him sitting at the table there at the Dascoin event. You'll also see next to him, we have Lim Soon Hawk. Then we have Brian Semkiv, we have Blair Baker, we have Michael Matthias himself all around this table. This is a very um, exclusive table with very, very important individuals at it. And sorry, can we skip on to the, the board of directors now? So as I was saying, we have the four co-founders who created the vision and attracted some world-class people to the board. Now, Michael Matthias and Terry O'Hearn are two of the co-founders. Then Dr. Eberhard Wedekind, if you've heard of Volvo, the company, Volvo Construction Equipment are a 10 billion a year annual concern. And Dr. Eberhard was the, uh, the, the president globally for that organization, responsible for the whole thing for 25 years. So this man actually left the board of Volvo to join the board here with Dascoin. And um, we have Lim Soon Hock, who again, through the vision of the co-founders, he has planted his flag and his reputation and become a board member with Dascoin. Now, Lim Soon Hock is a co-founder of Compact Computers, who, while he was the managing director, uh, over seven years took the company from less than 30 million turnover to in excess of a billion. We have Anna Hedgka, a serial entrepreneur who's founded over 20 companies. She's a former financial um, 
a banker at the highest level with Salomon Brothers, for example. Um, she's also very, very well known as the anchor on the, the show the, the Dragon's Den in Poland, as well as being an advisor to the president of Poland on financial matters. Anna Hedzka is one of the global, um, the, the big global names in venture capital. Uh, and, and she has decided again, after identifying Dascoin as, as a company that ticks her boxes, that is something that she wants to participate in. And uh, we also have here Augustine Vin. Augustine Vin is a, an advisor to the, the, the World Bank. Um, he's also been an advisor to the White House. In fact, he has a, a CV as long as my arm, but I don't have time to, to really go into any of these individuals in great detail. But please research who these people are um, so, so that you understand who has been attracted to this organization. Now, this, this slide here shows some of the other people that we have, such as Abraham Sofer um, over in the United States, who former White House counsel, has worked for the Secretary General of the United States, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But there's two people here that are very key to this story. Uh, one up the, the, in the middle at the top is called Blair Baker, and um, he's the CEO of DAS Payments. And then on the left, we have Brian Semkev, who's the CEO of Carta Worldwide. Blair Baker understood that with his relationship with Carta Worldwide and Brian Semkev, he could bring the ability to bridge the gap between cryptocurrency and merchants that had never been done before. The problem with cryptocurrency all 1,550 of them, is that you can hardly spend them anywhere. And Blair Baker recognized that he was able to bridge that gap. Um, Blair Baker himself, 20 years on Wall Street, where he looked after over 50 billion in funds, four years a central banker. Um, he actually edited the Central Banking Magazine, pioneered the Chinese currency into the financial markets, and was the co-founder of something called FXCM, which is the largest currency trading platform in the world, which he sold for gazillions. So he, you know, this is a man who is, does not looking for uh, for money. That he, he does not need to work again. He has got involved with this because he can see the benefits that this um, technology can bring globally. So he brought signed Brian Semkev to the table, and of all the cryptocurrencies that were available, they chose to partner with Dascoin, the Dascoin board, the Dascoin technology. So that is again huge third party validation. So moving forward, we can see Brian Semkiff's company, Carta Worldwide. These are, this company is effectively the world leader in, in transactional payment solutions globally. Um, they performed the, uh, the task of developing Apple Pay for Apple when Apple could not do it themselves. They developed Vodapay for Vodafone. But interestingly, they were smart enough not to sell the technology. They own the rights and they lease the technology. Um, they also developed the contactless payment system solution for MasterCard and Visa globally, as well as doing the transactions for PayPal, the new solution for Uber, and you can see here many financial institutions, and the list is, is very long. So Carta Worldwide is a key partnership for us in this space, and they have come together with us to bring the world's first digital mainstream cryptocurrency, um, where you can actually spend it on the high street. This is this is genuinely an enormous, enormous feat and a world first. So moving forward from Carta, the organization that Blair Baker um, has created is called DASPAY. Now DASPAY, they call it a silver bullet. I quite simply believe that it's not a silver bullet, it's the holy grail. It is what every single cryptocurrency has been seeking forever. And Blair Baker and Brian Semkiev have brought it here with DASCoin. And that means on the day that DASPAY is launched, we will be able to be accepted in over 60 million merchants globally on the existing Visa and MasterCard network, which requires no change to the existing technology for merchants. It goes down the existing rails. If we are to compare that to the leading spendable currency in the space, which it happens to be Bitcoin, um, over nine years it is spendable in 240,000 outlets. 80% of which happen to be in Japan. So when you're comparing that with 60 million merchants globally, I think you can see that we have something incredibly special here. And DASPAY is one of the key reasons why DASCoin will become mainstream. Now, lastly, um, I'd like to just say that we, we've made some very, very bold statements. Um, the most secure platform uh, in the digital space. Um, you know, the, the world's first mainstream digital currency. 
Uh, all of these statements and all of the information can be can be backed up in this publication here, Millionaire Asia. Now, Millionaire Asia is one of the most credible publications on the planet. It has the highest readership of millionaires uh, in Asia, over 170,000 subscribers who are all millionaires. And they are very, very careful with who they let uh, advertise in, in their pages. And if you actually look, there's like the BBC, um, we have uh, Bugatti, yeah, British Airways, all sorts of companies like that, Etihad, etc. So when Dascoin were looking to, to organize a two-page advert with this magazine, the company simply turned around and said, Dascoin, okay, we have to investigate who you are and vet you before we allow you to, to go into our magazine. And they actually sent a team over to attend the Tokyo launch of the internal exchange. And after that event, they basically came up to Michael Matthias and said, you will not be getting a two-page advert in our publication because we are so impressed with the impact and the global um, vision that you have and the impact you're going to have on hundreds of millions of people globally. We, we want to give you 24-page editorial plus front and back cover because we want to help this organization uh, you know, spread its word. Um, and that's never happened before. It's, never, it's probably never gonna happen again. But what it does is it gives us a phenomenal um, source for verifiable information on everything that I have been talking about so far. So if you want to, to validate what I'm saying, go to these pages, read through it. There's 24 pages. Get yourself a hold of a copy, uh, either digitally or physically and just read it as part of your due diligence. Look, moving forward, and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about Dascoin, the currency of trust. We are talking about here the ultimate digital currency with authenticated network, greater, uh, greater utility. There's a whole list of, of factors there. But essentially, this is a hybrid that combines the best aspects of decentralized digital currencies with the best elements of centralized currencies. So the next slide here shows, uh, on this graph, on the top right, we have all the fiat currencies that all are centralized and permissioned. They all have know your client processes. You have to open a bank account with identity. Everything is known. We have central banks that govern how much money is printed. Now, interestingly, that system is controlled by a very small number of banks. And in 2008, 2009, the creeks were really beginning to show. The failures in fiat currencies were becoming evident. And in response to that, and it was actually in response to the governments bailing the banking institutions out, Bitcoin was created, which is completely decentralized and open. It is off the grid. It is to enable me and you as individuals to exchange value anywhere in the world through the use of the blockchain technology, which as I said before, is completely unhackable. Um, that enables a secure exchange that has no oversight by banks or governments. Now, being open and decentralized and anonymous, these currencies are never going to fit into the current financial system. They are never going to be liked by governments. Governments like to raise taxes from exchanges of value. They want their cut. And the bottom line is, with the existing Bitcoin-esque cryptocurrencies, that cannot happen. So there's an awful lot of regulations that's emerging. Dascoin is perfectly positioned between the two taking the, the best elements of the centralized and decentralized um, systems and fitting into the current financial system through use of KYC. If we move on to the next, the next slide, we can say through the use of the KYC system, where you have to supply your photographic ID and proof of address, just as if you were opening a bank account. We also have uh, what we call a better blockchain. Uh, and, and quite simply, we have the fastest authenticated blockchain on the planet today. Now, we're just gonna look at a couple of key metrics here. On the left-hand side, you can see block time. This is the time that it takes to authenticate a transaction. Bitcoin is designed to operate at a 10-minute transaction speed. In reality, it is operating at between 40 and 60 minutes for most transactions, but some smaller transactions can take several days. We have Litecoin, 2.5 minute transaction speed. We have Ethereum at 14 seconds and we have Dascoin there at six seconds. Now, incidentally, that is one second faster than Visa and MasterCard. On the right-hand side, this is the other key metric. We have the speed. The second one is how many transactions can we perform per second? So that's transactions per second. Bitcoin can operate three. 
This is the reason why their speed has slowed down because there's a backlog on their system. And um, there are people trying to, to improve Bitcoin right now, but they have no centralized board of directors. It's not easy for them to make decisions because there's several individuals pulling in dif the different directions. And um, we have Ethereum here with 20 transactions per second. We have PayPal with 115 transactions per second and Visa currently operating on 2,000 transactions per second, but with a capacity to go to 56,000 transactions per second. Dascoin has been independently verified to over 100,000 transactions per second. And what we are saying here, in short, is that the technology and the platform is already in place upon which a truly global digital currency can operate. Blockchain, interestingly, is not just about digital currency. There are actually three other aspects to blockchain that, that blockchain can be used for um, in the transactional world. We have smart contracts. You may have heard of a company called Ethereum. Ethereum have based their entire market capitalization on the ability to perform smart contracts. And it would, I would contend that we have a superior smart contract offering than Ethereum. We have a better technology and we have a fully... Um, know your client system, which means, you know, if you take the old adage of trust who you do business with and you apply that online in the anonymous systems, you have no idea. Here, at least you know that you're dealing with a verified individual. Um, so our smart contract platform is there. We have securities where Blair Baker, this is his baby here, will enable our blockchain to interact with the current financial markets uh, so people can, can raise funds, crowdfunding, they can do, go into the private markets and derivatives, etc. We also have the ability to perform record keeping as i said before blockchain cannot be hacked so you know governments and large institutions they want to bring their records onto blockchain so that they cannot lose them so that nobody can come in as example happened in the uk to the uk government last year uh, when the, the the public health records were hacked um, and the, the UK government has moved to put all public records starting in, interestingly with with uh, title home uh, property titles onto blockchain to prevent this happening again. Um, so what we're contending here is that our blockchain, unlike most, which is designed for one or two specific aspects uh, of, of this, this whole here, we are actually a flexible blockchain which has the ability to perform every aspect that blockchain will be used for going forward. And here is the, the KYC, I was mentioning this before, which enables us to have the most secure platform for internal exchange on the planet. Uh, every participant, we have the KYC protocols, anti-money laundering. We also have every single transaction from your wallet will have to be physically verified with what we call our validator, which is pictured there. Here's a quick shot of our DAS exchange. This is a, a screenshot of, of the exchange platform, which I have to say happily is very, very, very simple to use. And should you, as part of your due diligence, wish to see a demonstration, simply ask the person who brought you onto this call. This is, what, this is why I'm so excited. You know, the people who looked at this, um, you know, 12 months ago plus, basically they had four gentlemen uh, with a pile of vision explaining what they were look, looking to do. There was no partnerships. The board of directors hadn't been assembled. We, we're, we're talking four guys with vision. Now, when you look at what we have, the partnerships are in place. The board of directors is something that other currencies simply would have fantasies uh, about. Um, the technology is independently verified. It's all done. What we have coming forward is we have the launch of the DAS coin on the public exchange on April the 27th uh, and the launch event will be on the 28th and the 29th in London. So what is really exciting about that is for the first time our coin offering will be valued by the market and I think when you, when you, when you compare apples with apples we have a very strong if not the strongest ever coin offering to hit the market and then Subsequent to that, we have the launch of Das Pay in the second quarter of 2018. And when this happens on that day, for the first time in history, you will be able to take cryptocurrency direct from the crypto space straight to the merchant in whichever fiat currency they happen to be in. So if they're in, for example, uh, in, in Europe, they will get paid in euros. If they're in Australia, they'll get paid in Australian dollars, etc., etc. That will be a world first. What will happen to the value of our coin when this level of utility becomes mainstream? Uh, I am, well, 
I'm bursting with excitement. So <laughs> that's the future that we have this year, the two main events. And look, lastly, whenever you're looking into um, something in this space, there's maybe four aspects that are really critical to the success moving forward. One, we have security. As already said, we have class leading security. Secondly, utility, 60 million merchants compared with our closest competitor, 240,000. There is no comparison, class leading utility. Liquidity, we already have an internal exchange that's operating with us tens of thousands of transactions on a platform that enables incredibly speedy transactions, six second transaction speed and the capacity to be um, to be able to operate on a global level. The last one is capital appreciation. And look, capital appreciation is key for anybody who's getting the information um, and, and is looking at, um, at the cryptocurrency space. We, nobody can guarantee capital appreciation, and we're certainly not guaranteeing it. However, what I suggest is I suggest that you do more research and you learn a little bit more about cryptocurrencies, about the performance of the good solid offerings. And here's a slide here, which gives you some examples of what's happening. Um, each one of these coins is, is amongst the top 10 uh, on coin market cap, on, on total market capitalization. And you can see here the growth in just 10 months. Um, they are ridiculous figures. Bitcoin itself has grown over 10 times in 10 months. Um, some of the figures here are ridiculous. Our contention is that with the strength of our offering, comparing apples with apples, we expect great things and wealth to be created um, with our coin. And what is really exciting is the opportunity is for us today to take advantage of the ed education that, that we just received or, or an, an overview uh, that we've just received and, and then go and educate ourselves in the space. So our opportunity is to take advantage of our knowledge and to research it to the point where we are confident enough that we want to participate at some level and put some skin in the game here. Now, how do we acquire Dascoin? There is only one way to do it in advance of the launch on the open exchange, and that is to purchase a software license through NetLeaders, the marketing arm of the company. What does that effectively mean? Well, everybody who purchases a license gets access to the most remarkable ecosystem and platform with, with the ability to do your last will and testament, your, your title, participate in financial markets through the blockchain, etc. In addition to that, each license gives a certain number of, of cycles, which are like internal tokens for use on the platform with all the services we have. You are able to sub, submit those cycles and transform them into actual DAS coin. Now, clearly, with the larger licenses, the licenses start at 100 euro and go right up to the presidential license at 25,000 euro. The more of a financial commitment you're able to make, the more DAS coin you can get for your money. So clearly there's a better value proposition if you're able to make a greater financial com uh, commitment. However, from as little as 100 euros, people can actually participate as a customer here. Take the first step, choose a, choose a license that suits you. So educate yourself on, on, on the company, on the offering, uh, and you know just make a decision uh, and, and make history with us. We have an opportunity with net leaders um, to actually participate in the growth of the company. And what I'd just like to do is I'd like to ask you to, to just jump in here and, and talk a little bit about uh, the business side. I think hopefully I've covered uh, some of the technology, the team, the timing. Um, and, and the product information. Uh, but just for the last few slides, um, I'd like to, you to come in uh, and just cover this off. So thank you very much for your time and attention and a great pleasure to, to bring Hugh back to the table. Thanks, Stephen. Good job there. Well done and well explained. Guys, um, one of the things that intrigued and impressed me from the outset was I have yet to meet Megan Mathias personally, but having spoken with Paul and, and Nick and some of the guys, who have spent a lot of time with Michael, they have very, very quickly, and particularly Vivian, actually, this, these are names that mean nothing to you, but if you get engaged or involved in the business, you know there's a tremendous support and help network. And Vivian O'Callaghan's background has been in tile importing now for many years. He's one of Ireland's largest tile importers, owns a number of large retail stores throughout Southern Ireland. And he said to me that when he met Michael, he realized that this guy just wasn't paying lip service to people when he met them. He realized that this guy genuinely wanted to create a concept that he believed cryptocurrency, if it was to fulfill its full potential, 
would have to bring a concept where the masses were going to benefit from it. And that's what he wanted to create with net leaders and, and with Dazcoin. Create a concept in the cryptocurrency space where loads of people could benefit from it. So in doing so, he actually created a system and an organization within an organization called Net Leaders. And that's basically the marketing arm of what we are when it comes to sharing the DAS coin story, bringing it to the masses, creating a situation where not just the one operator, the person who is owned or set up or dreamt up the business with a few selected friends or making large inroads and large sums of cash as the business develops, but literally to spread the wealth of the company amongst all its members. And in doing so, in creating the, the Net Leaders Network, he has created a unique way. Um, so, and I, I'd say unique because within this sector, I mentioned right from the outset that I was a reluctant participant because whenever I seen direct sales mixed with um, the cryptocurrency space, I, I smelt and saw a recipe for disaster. And that was how the bracket that I had put this into in the early stages. And it took me 12 months, uh, folks, to get to the situation where I actually believed and come to realize that this company would deliver something different. So if Dale takes us to the last slide um, on this, you'll see that there's an opportunity here, um, folks, to enjoy the, the revolution that this company isn't creating. Um, not going into all the detail, whoever invited you onto the call can explain this in greater depth. But basically, if you choose to share this story with someone, and again, most of her membership have actually just purchased a license and they'll sit quietly and not tell anyone else about it. For those who choose to engage and get involved in the side where if you share the story, there is a remuneration, there is the potential to enjoy huge uh, percentage of the profits that the company is generating and we have loads of testimonies and examples to that but I'm not going to share that with you on this call. Simply to say that there's at one time 10% direct sale commission if you share this story with someone who chooses to purchase a license and I have to say I haven't had to sell one license to anyone. I simply share the story. I have attached them to webinars. I've made them aware of the information that they have made the decision to purchase something. I have been remunerated personally to the tune of 10% for that direct sale. The same as the seat you may be sitting on, the computer or laptop or, or iPad or telephone device that you're listening to this call from, someone who sold that got a commission. There's commission made on absolutely everything that moves on this planet today. Secondly, if you choose to develop a team, and the team could develop even without much effort from yourself. It could actually develop um, despite your best efforts. If a team develops, there's potential to generate what we call a 10% binary bonus, an overriding bonus in some of your team sales. And again, you'll find that out from the person who shared the story. And we have a third bonus called a matching bonus, equal to 10 to 30% paid down what we call five levels deeper, five generations based on your own personal team efforts. The beauty of this commission, guys, is that it is paid out weekly. So any business that's done this week, you'll be paid for the following week, only within seven days. We have no ongoing monthly maintenance fees, no activity requirements. We have education system in place to take people who are complete novices in this arena. Five months ago, if you were chatting to me about anything connected to this industry, I would have laughed you out the door. I'd have said, just another scam, simply because I hadn't educated myself. I hadn't opened my mind. My mind was completely closed to this concept. When I heard the information that um, Stephen shared with you this morning, the caliber of the companies behind it, I realized that these people were no slouches. These people had already got a hugely successful track record in the biggest cutthroat industries on the planet, and they had carved out a market for themselves and made themselves, their families and the people around them and the companies they work with, huge, hugely successful. So whether I chose to get involved or not, it was going to happen with me or without me. Cryptocurrency, blockchain revolution had already happened without me. And I thought to myself, do I just be a bystander? And, and whinge and moan about the fact that I wasn't getting involved or people uh, who were getting involved were delusional or should I actually look into it and explore it? And that's what I chose to do. And this company and the people who have helped build it thus far have put together a tremendous teaching and support network to bring you to whatever level you choose to bring yourself to. 
I'll leave you with this uh, thought before we go. Richard Branson, who has been mentioned on a couple of these slides, and I'm not saying Richard doesn't endorse our company or anything that we do, but he does endorse the industry as a whole in both arenas, both cryptocurrency and blockchain, and also direct sales in a huge way. In fact, he has probably got more directorships. I looked a few years ago into his background and his history as I was reading some of the books on him, and I came across one of these statements that he made. If someone offers you an amazing opportunity, but you're not sure if you can do it or not, say yes and learn how to do it later. The reason that Richard Branson has become so successful is that he gets offered and, and pitches made to him on numerous concepts on a regular basis. And frequently, most of them, he doesn't know anything about. But if he gets a good feeling about it, he makes a gut decision and he learns what he needs to learn later on. He dismisses many of them, probably far more than he gets involved in. But if it feels good and it feels right, he says yes, whether he knows anything about the industry and he learns how to make it work later. And that's why he's become so successful. This opportunity, folks, I had dismissed and dismissed and dismissed. And with this company, I spent 12 months before I decided to engage. And I'm glad that one of my closest friends for over 20 years, Tony, kept at me and at me and at me until I actually stopped one day and looked in a bit of more depth as to what was happening. I scoured the internet looking for reasons, looking for faults, because if you're looking for something, you'll find the information on the internet that reinforces what it is you're looking for. I was looking for both positive and negative, and I was blown away by the positive. I found one or two bits of negative. I also discovered that that was put there by a guy who was making a fortune, writing so-called scam blogs, trying to discredit many, many companies, using deflammatory language like in my opinion what she meant he really wasn't legal jargon and he could get away with it outside of that all of the other information i found was extremely positive and when i seen like i say before i finish the lineup of the companies and individuals involved who were shouting from the rafters who had stood up to be kind of behind and supporting what this company were doing i realized it was time for me to engage so with that i'm going to thank you for being on the call i'm going to thank you on behalf of whoever invited you on the call Hopefully some of it makes sense. Somewhere in the near future, I might get a chance to meet you. But do your own research. Find out what's going on because I believe we're at the forefront of something that's going to be absolutely major and you should be part of it. But that's a decision for yourself. It's great to see so many people on the call from all over the world. Uh, thank you for being here.